let's just be wary about what our environment needs. Because if you don't give it what it needs, it also retaliates. And you know, the retaliation of nature can never be compared to anything. There were wild animals here. Where are the jackals? Where are the hyenas? In this ecosystem that we have, there's a link that is missing. What happened? In terms of environment, we do see great difference. The difference with the heat, it's not normal. It was never like this before. The rain used to fall. Now it takes time. And when it does, sometimes it damages things. It's easier these days to have sinuses. Why this is happening? Questions have to be answered. Then you have environmental groups that tell you the reason we are having this is because of the emission that comes from power stations. It's because of uh, the dust that comes from, from coal. But the reality is that I do spot difference. Waterbeck FM 99.3, go with the floor. My name is Rato Mabula, and a warm welcome to tonight's edition where we are focusing on the impact emissions and other carbon dioxide contributions that are there that are negatively impacted. Communication is about acknowledgement. So if I'm a radio presenter or I'm a journalist, I'm representing the community that cannot speak at that particular time. They cannot ask the questions. Sometimes they are not so privileged enough to know the information I know. That's why I emphasize the issue of responsible journalism because when you have researched your story, you would know what to present to who and how without doing any damage, just to open the eyes of the people so that people may know that as we do this, these are the consequences. We've got power stations and they, they are contributing immensely to the economy, unfortunately. But I think the, the conversation we should be having if we want to sustain the economy at this particular stage is to say, okay, how do we ensure that you comply with the issue of emission? So for me, let's be honest there. What structures are put in place to ensure that after doing what you are doing, whatever that you are banning, where does it go? Because we can't stop them now. Over 100,000 people are employed there. So if you stop that instantly, then the economy is going to suffer not against anything and it's good to to have developments in our areas but i just wish the powers that be and those that are in the know have to be honest if as a radio station you want to run a particular story or narrative to say people should be aware of the dangers in the environment as a result of project one two three and then project one, two, three comes to the station and say, hey, look, we want to partner with you. We're going to give you one million per month. What's going to happen? And that is betraying the community that lacks information. So there are media outlets out there which are quite clearly bought and paid for by these global commercial interests. Peer reviewed scientific consensus says there's a direct link between our burning of carbon and the heating of the atmosphere. And that oil, coal, and natural gas are responsible for 90% of that. What uh, big oil does is use the science and the media against itself. And that has cost us in terms of the ability of civilization to sustain itself. The type of leaders we have, are they aware about environment? Are they aware about implications of what is happening now is going to cause for the near future? I was at the World Conference of Science Journalists in July last year, and difficult questions are asked. You say that by 2030 we have to halve our carbon emissions, otherwise it's the end of civilization as we know. Can we do it? because my back of the envelope calculation says we're going to hit two degrees globally by 2030. By 2060, we're going to be pushing 3.5. At those levels, you don't want to be in sub-Saharan Africa. Unlivable. Can't grow crops, can't sustain livestock. So what do you do? What do you do? And the only answer to that is to go back to the wisdom of nature itself. You know, if there was one take home from there, it's that all journalism is climate journalism. This is the ultimate lens 
our politics and our economics and our cultural disagreements all take place within this framework. If your department has not delivered water, yours is to come here and account for the injustice you have subjected those people to. Apologize genuinely and say, we have messed up here, instead of giving people false hope. And that's the big problem I'm realizing, especially with communicators in the country. They think you are inviting them to be attacked, but we only want clarity. The human rights are completely implicated in environmental rights. Your desecration of nature, is fundamentally linked to your desecration of the other in human form. Here we are on Earth. The reality is that the future is a bit bleak, but it's in our hands. If we are willing to change, we will do something that goes along that line. But if we don't want to change, we'll also continue with the system we have. There is hope, though that hope is like a dot in a very big, dark place. My name is Rato Umabula. I believe in honesty and fair information.